Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and this is a TAS-6. You remember a while ago, I had that review of the TAS-6, but it had some issues. It was a pre-production unit. I was one of a few chosen ones to get one. Mine had the issues, and it was said that I was going to send it back, and once they had another one for me to review, they were going to send it to me, and time passed. Everybody got busy. I met up with Lulzbot at CES. I talked to Harris. I talked to Kara. Things were awesome. This arrived, I unboxed it, I put it together. So now, first let's talk about Lulzbot and their presence at CES, and then let's talk about this new TAS-6 and the direction we're gonna go with the review. You ready? Go. This trip to CES 2017 was made possible in part by my patrons who support me at patreon.com. Hey, CES and Lulzbot, two things that go together like peanut butter and jelly. The Lulzbot booth was massive. It wasn't as big as some other booths, but it was quite honestly a, a large booth. They had a lot of printers on display. They had a show of force of very knowledgeable people on the floor. And then they had these meeting pods off to the side where they could actually do official business. One of the things that Lulzbot was featuring at CES was the Moore Struder. It's a huge 1.2 millimeter nozzle with this huge heater block. So it can, it can spit out this large bead of filament as fast as you can fit it in. Imagine this. Imagine you have a toothpaste tube and you're holding it upside down and you squeeze it really hard. That's essentially what the Moore Struder is doing, but with the precision of Lulzbot and Aleph Objects Engineering. The Moore Struder was on display and it was showing off these really cool models. Let's see, there was a Benchy, there was a vase. It was doing these crazy zigzag patterns. The booth also had a torture cube. It wasn't the Maker's Muse torture cube. It was, an, it was another one, but it still looked fantastic. I got to talk to Kara and I got to talk to Harris. And we, we talked about my review and we talked about my channel growth. And they, they said, it's, it's great that you have a mini. Thank you for your honest review of the TAS-6. And we know we need to get you uh, another one out there so that you can finish your review. And it was neat because at CES, I got to actually, well, I got to meet these people in person. Harris and Kara, I've never met in person before. They were at uh, Rapid when I was at uh, Maker Faire, I think is what it was. And I finally got to meet them. Not only that, they realized that the effort I put in to get down to CES was, was good. And they knew that they, they had to get this TAS-6 to me. So it was shortly after that that we made arrangements to get this machine right here to my house. The unboxing of this printer went fairly well. We have a chalkboard wall here at the house. And I had some of my kids decorate the chalkboard wall with Lowell's Bot Chalk images and it turned out really good. I was able to get the lull spot out of the box in front of this wall and unpack it. It was packed just as well as the pre-production unit was. In fact, I didn't find any specific packaging changes since the Lulzbot TAS-6 that I originally got in for review and the, the packaging has been going well. They do include a note in the box that says, keep this packaging in case you do need to do a warranty return of your machine and replacement packaging does cost 75 US dollars. Once the machine was unpacked, I was able to bring all the pieces into my office here and I was, I was able to get it together. And what's interesting, I, I already knew how, right? I knew how to put this machine together since I was, I've put one together before and it went together just fine. One of the things I noticed that I'm extremely, extremely happy to tell you is that the mount, the actual mount of the, the extruder and the hot end assembly uh, to the braces on the machine, uh, it, it's awesome. It's firm. It doesn't slip, it doesn't slide. Mine slipped a little bit. It, it was wiggly. Uh, it's just, it didn't feel solid and it, it made me kind of sad. What's great is in this box, they did ship with the requisite ColorFab engine and it's the, the Lulzbot green. So you could print this, uh, let's see, you could print this octopus, the octopus. Uh, I was able to do that with this, but look at this. In the bag itself is this Protopasta HT PLA Silver Smoke sample. That's pretty cool. Big shout out to Lulzbot for including Protopasta filaments in their package to, uh, to have people run on their printers. That's good. I love protopasta filament, so I was very happy to see that package in the box. Once the printer was all together and turned on, it was time to print the Roctopus model. And 
it went extremely well. The engine fed into the, the heater just fine and it extruded just as it should. There's an actual engine Roctopus selection on the SD card that Lulzbot sends with their printer. So I just chose that. The automatic bed leveling, uh, it worked like a champ and it laid down smooth, consistent, buttery layers of ColorFab engine and produced an exquisite Roctopus. There's a tiny bit of stringing on this Roctopus and as the example model, I didn't quite expect that and I don't remember there being stringing on the one that I got before, but stringing is merely a temperature and retraction issue and isn't a symptom of a greater machine problem, so I am not worried about that. The other thing I printed on this machine is this little screaming pyramid guy. And here's the story on that. So this one that's in my right hand, the bigger one, this is what I printed on the pre-production model, the model I had before, and it had some, some layering issues. It was sporadic. It didn't, um, it didn't level right because the, the bottom layers aren't as perfect as they should be. The arms are kind of jaggy. I wasn't happy with this model. I know it looks okay, but I wasn't happy because this isn't the quality that's expected or desired of the Lulzbot machines. So I, I saved this because I wanted to compare once I got my other machine and this is the other machine here. So now I printed this and this is a much better representation of that model and the abilities of this Lulzbot Taz 6. I used, <laughs> here's what's crazy. This is the uh, Innov 1800 Chroma strand that came with my original Lulzbot Taz 6. This is that same roll. I saved that roll so I could print with it again on this machine to see the difference. And the, the difference is there. This machine does appear to be put together better. It appears to be calibrated. It appears to be a tighter machine. So I'm really looking forward to printing some more stuff on it. Also included with this Taz 6 was a shipment of the Polylite. It's a Polymaker Polylite PLA. I've never printed with this yet, but if you look, it is blue and it's my blue. It's, it's a good deep blue. So I'm going to, I'm going to get a maker coin. I have a stack here. I'm going to get a maker coin printed on this machine and uh, I'm going to uh, for first because I want that blue coin and then uh, we'll see what happens from there. All right, well, the big question is where do we go with this machine? How far do I need to take it to verify that things are good? There were very specific things that I called out in the original review saying, Lulzbot, you need to fix these and then I need to re-verify. So I need to at least test the things I called out before and that was Z inconsistencies and that was the loose uh, extruder right here. And I've already verified that this extruder is not loose like the one before, so we can check that one off. I do need to print more models and verify that the Z inconsistencies aren't there. Um, but other than that, I'm just gonna shove a bunch of models through this machine. My goal is to get through that entire roll of Polylite PLA. And then once I have all the models from that, I'll produce some final thoughts on this machine. If you have any questions about this machine, leave them in the comments or shoot me an email and I'll do my best to get to those. Uh, it's been a little bit hard to get to comments lately because you guys uh, are awesome and you leave a lot of comments. And so uh, uh, all comments are appreciated, obviously, but if you have a specific question about this machine, you may need to raise your hand a little bit higher than others so that I see it. Also, I have an affiliate link for this machine down in the description through Matter Hackers. And uh, if you choose to buy this and you buy it through Matter Hackers, I'll get a small kickback for referring you to them. And uh, kickbacks are good because then I can pick up more Scooby Snacks and Red Bull. Well, with that, we're good. There, see, I updated you on Lulzbot at CES and gave you a short little tour of their booth. We talked about the more Struder. I told you I got to meet Harris and Kara in person. I got a TAS-6 again. It has some of the issues fixed that I talked about. I do need to print more models to verify they're fixed. And my goodness, this is exciting. So uh, we'll call it right there. Thanks for watching. A thumbs up if this is cool. Obviously, things in the comments are awesome if you want to leave them there. Big giant thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com. Uh, last but not least, don't forget to hug each other more often because I love you guys. As always, high five.